Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we are continuing our Hot Rodding 101 series where we basically focus on the basics for starting to build a traditional or nostalgic style hot rod or custom. So today's focus is wheels. With it becoming winter time, we get a lot of phone calls with customers that are looking to uh, buy wheels for a new or, or existing project that they want to put their wheels on and they don't know really what they want or what fits or how to achieve a look that they show us and we usually end up doing a lot of emails back and forth to try and help them get the wheel that they want. So we're going to be focusing today specifically on the early Ford style wheels um, because that is probably the most common if you're building uh, an older hot rod. Even some of the what I call off-brand uh, type cars that are built into hot rods, a lot of times they end up using a Ford straight axle or a Ford rear, something like that, and you end up with these types of wheels anyway. So you can kind of read between the lines. But we're gonna go over all the different scenarios and kind of show you guys some of the things uh, that people trip up on and end up buying the wrong stuff and they waste money because they weren't really educated on what they're buying at a swap meet, eBay, wherever else. So let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with wire wheels. This is we're going to start kind of like with the the OG type stuff, and then work our way up through. So wire wheels. Uh, before that, were wood wheels. We're going to you know jump a little ahead of that because most people are running hot rods are not running wood spoke wheels. So wire wheels, uh, basically starting with late Model Ts. Uh, you would have seen uh, wire wheels start to show up, and then um, into Model As, they were standard equipment on all Model As. So the easiest way to remember uh, any of this when you're shopping for wire wheels is the older the car, the larger the size of the wheel. So 28, 29 Model As respectively had 21 inch and 20 inch wire wheels, and then the 3031s ended up having 19 inch wire wheels. We're going to kind of skip over those. Those can be used for sure if you're doing a real early style. Uh, build or maybe a jalopy um, or even if you're doing a T type hop up or, or go job you can use uh, the Model 8 wheels can switch over and, and it looks pretty cool but uh, we don't get a ton of calls about those but if you're using that stuff if you use Model A drums and parts uh, it's pretty easy to do. After that going along with the year change uh, just like we were talking about uh, starting with 32 Ford 32 Ford had 18 inch only wire wheels then 33, 34 had 17 inch only uh, wire wheels, which you see here. And then when we got to the uh, kind of famous 35 Ford wires, one year only, they went to 16 inch. That is the type of wire wheel that pretty much everybody is hunting for. Um, that was the, the bee's knees when you, were, when you were back in the day, so to speak. Uh, 16 inch wheels were the hot new thing. You could swap them onto earlier cars. You could get better tire sizes. And, um, and they supposedly you know, rode better because you had more sidewall on your wheels. So with these wheels, it's pretty easy from afar to, to judge uh, the size of the wheel. You can look at the spacing between the spokes. Uh, is one quick way when I'm like walking the swap meet, I could tell because the spacing of where the spokes cross over on 16 inch wheels is pretty tight together because the rim is actually closer to the center of the wheel. Now, a lot of people use different ways to identify valve stem holes and things like that, like on the, um, 17s and 18s, the valve stem hole can be placed a little bit differently than the 16s, but overall that's, that's probably the quickest, easiest way. Now there are some, um, some optional type wheels that you can get as far as the wire wheels go. The probably most sought after is the 16 inch um, Kelsey Hayes wheels, which are the bend spokes as they call them, like we have here on our 34 Beautiful. Um, they have tighter knit spokes that are actually um, kind of cross over each other, have a little bend where they go into the rim. Those are just like, I think they were like just optional wheels or aftermarket wheels that a lot of people switch to. They're supposed to be stronger. You've seen them on a lot of early hot rods, they were running those. So those are very sought after. They could be a little more expensive. The nice thing with all the wire wheels as far as early V8 cars go from 32 um, to the 35s, all of those center hubcaps, they actually interchange. So it doesn't matter if you have a 32, uh, 33, 34, uh, 35, you, all those hubcaps can actually interchange on these wheels. So it's pretty cool that you could swap them around and you could put 32 uh, ribbed hubcaps on say a 35 wheel, it doesn't really matter. So these wheels are good. Now one thing to mention when you're looking for these wheels, because they are wire wheels, a lot of them are bent or tweaked or tacoed or you know they just have all kinds of, they can have all kinds of issues. So 
Um, you really, at a swap meet, it's hard to tell unless you can eyeball it. Bent spokes can or cannot be a problem. I've had wheels that I've had spokes that were broken. I, I um, put them back in place, TIG welded them together, and they were totally fine. You just want to make sure that the rim is not totally out of whack. But if you see something that has a lot of bent spokes or the rim has like a, you know, a little weird spot in it, it looks like somebody took an adjustable wrench and corrected, you may want to shy away from it if you don't know the person or you don't know the background on it. So be much more vigilant with picking out your wheels on wire wheels because they tend to be bent uh, much more often and riding around on rough roads like they had back in the early days. Um, it's more common for these wheels to be bent and, and out of round and there's really not a good way to straighten these uh, unlike without cutting spokes and, and changing things unlike some of the uh, more solid wheels we're going to get into. As well as the bent or, or broken spokes on these wire wheels, one other thing that I see as a chronic problem is the bolt holes for the lug holes. For whatever reason, I don't know if people forgot to tighten their lugs in the early days, but these wire wheels seem to be uh, plagued with uh, egged out holes for the lug holes. It seems to be very common that you see these where you'll buy one where the lugs were run loose and one is like, you know, one or two holes will be like really wallowed out and that is not good. You should try and avoid that. If it's some kind of super special wheel that your you know, grandfather had when he was born and it's on the hot rod he built in high school or something that you have to live with that wheel and can't throw it away, you could weld up the hole, center it up, and drill a new hole and do all that, but it is a lot of work because these wheels are still around. But definitely when you're at a swap meet or if you're shopping online, try and get extra photos to make sure that those lug holes aren't opened up, there isn't something weird in them because it can cause issues. And again, it could make the wheels so it's not centered when you tighten it down and cause a vibration. All right, and the last thing about the wire wheels is fitting them to your car. So if you have an earlier V8 car, um, or even if you're using a Model A or Model T that you're using juice brakes from a later car, um, you do need to, uh, you may need to uh, do a safety change or uh, adaptation to your car. So if you're using an earlier car with earlier drums that the car came with wire wheels, you're set. They actually have little ribs on them that are meant to uh, mount wire wheels to them. Um, if you're using uh, juice brakes on your car and you want to put wire wheels on, actually the way that the rim fits onto the drum, there is actually adapters that they sell that are like centering rings that go in there to help fit that. That's to uh, make the wheel actually fit the drum better so that you don't get a vibration or if it's sitting a little funny on the studs, you can actually get it, uh, which will seem like you have a bad tire or something, but it's just the rim isn't fitting the drum quite correctly. So you can get those centering rings from a lot of the uh, 1-800 automotive supply places. Um, if you're trying to put these uh, solid wheels we're gonna get into in a minute on the earlier cars, again, you may need to swap the drums to the later um, like smooth face drums that are for those wheels. But that's just one thing to mention. If you're getting wire wheels and you're doing the juice brake thing, it doesn't hurt. I think those, those adapters are only a few bucks. So you can buy them, put them on your drum, they slide right on, put these wheels on, and it'll be a good peace of mind. All right, so kind of going down the early Ford timeline, the next thing, and this is probably the one we get the most questions about, is the early Ford wide five wheels. So starting in 1936, Ford went to this wide five pattern. Not really sure why, I'm sure somebody can answer that a little better than me, but the wide five pattern came in 36 and they kept it until uh, 39 on pretty much most of their products. So the uh, wide five wheel pretty much, as far as widths go and diameters, 99% of them are going to be, if it's on a passenger car, 16 inch diameter by four inches wide. You don't get as much of a difference like some of the later wheels where you can find um, different sizes and they look the same. So 16 inch in diameter is pretty much it. That's what they all were. You may see some 15 inches. There's some like really, really rare uh, wheels that may have like a 15 inch. I think there was like a rare, I forget what it is, that had like a 15 inch wheel. Um, there's also an optional 18 inch wheel that's like a high clearance that is like hen's teeth that is very, very rare, very sought after, that is still this wide five pattern. You're not gonna really find those in just your general swap meet hunting. What you're gonna see is a wheel just like this, that's 16 by four. These wheels use their own hubcaps, so pretty much all of the wide five wheels, you can interchange the hubcaps on them. They have these clips that you see here one downside to these are is these clips are like spring steel and they are riveted on. It's very common that these clips will be broken. It is very tough to replace clips. You need to try and rivet the clip back on, which is hard to get in there to buck the rivet. And 
a lot of times I end up just welding. Uh, I put a rivet in and I will bucket and also weld it. Uh, the other problem is these clips need to be bent out very far. So if you're replacing clips, you need to make sure they are bent out very far so the hubcap fits very snug because they will fly off. Ask me how I know. So uh, if you find one that has the clips that are broken, uh, a lot of times if you don't have the um, if you don't have the ability to TIG weld or, or make your own clips, I would probably shy away from it because it is a pain and I'd hate to see you lose a hubcap. So that's the clips and the, and the hubcaps and the wheel itself. Now there was versions of this wheel that came out that are kind of fun to hunt for. So in, uh, in this time period, um, Ford came out with the Flathead V860, which is like a little small um, flathead V8 and with those cars a lot of times there was uh, some small differences that they put on that car for whatever reason so there's a highly sought after three and a half inch wide 16 inch wide five wheel so that is a little bit narrower hot rodders were running them in the front so it gives like a kind of a, a small thin look when you're running smaller tires especially when it's paired with larger tires in the rear it gives a really cool look so those wheels are, are highly sought after it's really hard to tell those wheels unless you stare at a lot of them to tell the difference, but they will be, if you, me if you actually measure right here, like any, any wheel out there, between the beads on the inside, if it's three and a half, that is a V860 wheel, highly sought after. They can be expensive, but they have a cool look if you're building a hot rod and want to put them on the front. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, you can look for wide V860s. Uh, a lot of the bigger trucks, like three quarter ton trucks, um, once you got up into bigger than like three quarter ton, the wheels changed completely. But like the three quarter ton trucks got a, uh, a wheel that was like five or five and a half inches wide. I, th I think I've seen both. Um, the face actually looks a little bit different, but the clips snap right on. So my old meat truck had those type of wheels on it. They were wider and more dished. And it almost gives like a reversed wheel type look, but in a factory type setup. So once you pop those clip caps on, um, it'll pretty much all the wheels will look very, very similar. Now there is a ton of hubcap, hubcap options for these wide fives. There are um, all the factory caps, which will, will pop on here and like pretty much all the Ford product wheels. The, any wheel that looks like this, the cap will interchange. There's also the optional spider caps, which fit kind of over these uh, outer edges here and totally changes the look of the wheel, which is really, really neat and uh, you, can, you can find those caps well, but again, they get their optional thing, they can get expensive. Uh, these wheels also are starting to get kind of hard to find because these wheels were very popular in dirt car racing. They kind of, uh, circle track racing kind of adapted this wide five pattern and, and continued it on even into today. I think it is used um, quite often. So these wheels are used and abused from old time circle and dirt track cars. Nowadays, you can buy the wheels right, you know, brand new, but they were using these wheels for a long, long time. So a lot of times you find these wheels and again, they are smashed up, bent, tacoed, whatever. If you see one of these wheels that's got like a big fat dirt tire on it or has been like reversed uh, with a new hoop put on it, you may want to stay away from it because a lot of those wheels were heavily, heavily abused. And if you try and put it on a street car, there's a good chance that it probably has some issues if you're trying to put it on like a nice street rod or something like that. So. The Wi-Fi wheels are cool. They, um, they take a little bit of a, a change if you're trying to run them on your car that has a normal um, five by five and a half bolt pattern. Uh, you need to change the drum out on it. So if you have a car that already has juice brakes on it, uh, you can easily change your bolt pattern to this style wheel by simply getting a set of four uh, early Ford wide five bolt pattern drums. You slide them off, slide your old ones off, slide the new ones on, and you can pretty much, it's because the hub's built into the drum, you can swap your bolt pattern right over and be running wide five. So it's a cool way that you could change the total look of your car by just swapping some drums. Just be careful, we've covered in other videos, 36 only had a front drum that the snout was actually longer, so it will not fit your spindle if you're trying to use uh, anything other than 36 spindles. So otherwise, you can just get a some wide five drum, say from like a 39 with juice brakes, you put that whole conversion on your earlier car. You can have wide fives. If you want to change to a 40 Ford style wheel, you can simply slide the drums off, slide those drums on, and you're ready to go for making the change. So if you're shopping for this stuff, you know, start looking for drums because the drums are probably harder to find good usable drums than actual wide five wheels themselves. So when you're out hunting onesie twosies, uh, buy them at swap meets for cheap. And then when you get a set of them together, you can find some that can be cut, put on your car and run with these wheels.
All right, so the last big one that we're going to cover here is the smoothie style wheel. Probably the most popular wheel for building uh, or using on a nostalgic hot rod, custom, whatever, um, or even street rod. The smoothies type wheel, I'm lumping it in. I know some people uh, cringe when you hear that word, but the smoothie type wheel, uh, which is your traditional steel wheel design, uh, is the next set of wheels we're going to talk about and there is a lot of variations in this that you can uh, run into so um, the Ford after the, the wide five pattern Ford went back to the five by five and a half pattern that was put back onto Ford's after the 39 and they in 40 came out with this smooth type wheel which is probably the most popular wheel to, to see run on a, a hot rod custom street rod so these wheels uh, in 40 came out, they have a smooth style face, um, but a true 40 wheel is 16 inch by four inches wide. Uh, Ford continued to make these wheels for a number of years, so once you got later uh, into like the 41, uh, 42 to 48 era, you started seeing them in, uh, in four and a half inches wide, which is probably more common to find. Um, and then also there were variations as well, which we'll get into a little bit. So a real 40 wheel, um, a lot of times you can see them because they have this pinstripe on the face. So a lot, most 40 wheels had that. When if they're an older restoration, a lot of times people put the pinstripes back on. There are some small differences in the bead of the wheel here, or the, the, the tire bead area in the wheel that is different only on a 40. If you're doing a true restoration, that is something that you need to look at. at. If you're doing just a hot rod that you're not that you're on a budget, you're not too worried. This inner lip area we're here with the tire seats is just purely something that you only notice when the wheel is apart or off the car. Otherwise, they all interchange, they all are the same. So if you need to piece together wheels, it's totally okay, as long as you're matching the widths of the wheels. So um, these 40 Ford wheels, they are probably the most fun, be these style wheels, because there is like tons and tons of hubcaps to fit these wheels and they all interchange. So if you have a Mercury hubcap like this, there's multiple types of Mercury hubcaps they have this lip on the back, they will clip right onto these wheels. There's four wheels, there's four truck wheels. Um, there's uh, all kinds of different caps that you can run. There's like the, the smooth uh, baby moon caps or beanie caps as some people call them um, that will also fit on here. So basically this in between these, I saw I call it the inside nub type wheel. Because uh, later wheels, they, they started putting the, the, uh, the nubs on the outside for the hubcaps. But these inside nub wheels, if you measure between here and you're unsure, it should be just over eight inches between these nubs across. And any hubcap that is just over that with this style lip will fit. So any of the Ford truck, car, um, Mercury, they use this style wheel, they will clip on. What's really fun about that is you can change the whole look of your car by just changing over those center hubcaps. 40 Ford also came with a bunch of accessory type items. So there is a outside, uh, there is a rib trim ring that you could put on that'll fit any 16 inch wheel. There's an inside rib trim ring that is actually ribbed and stainless that will clip around and cover the face of the wheel. And then you can also run a hubcap. So you can see how it's pretty cool on these, on these wheels. You can really change the look of your car from week to week or season to season, however you want, just by tr changing a couple of those little things on the wheel. And that's why I really like these, as well as obviously putting full uh, hubcap covers on. So these wheels in the 16 inch form, as I mentioned, there's the four inch, there's actually a three and a half inch version. It's the V860 for 40 only. So in 40 only, they had a V860 wheel that is again, three and a half inches wide, very sought after, very hard to find. So uh, 40 Fords and all the way up through 48 um, Fords had 16 inch wheels and that's where you can find and, and change them around depending on the width. Now trucks, again, got wider wheels. You will see a five or five and a half inch wheel. And then there's also the high clearance wheel, which again goes to 18 inch, but looks just like this in, in the face. There's also some like milk truck wheels, which look a little different and are also like 18 inch. Um, but again, that's kind of obscure stuff we're not trying to get too off course with. So um, if you want to run a like more of a later, I guess you could say into the 50s type look, you started seeing 15 inch wheels becoming much more popular. 
I guess the tire sizes were better. There was, uh, again, more sidewall. You could run full wheel covers from all kinds of 50 cars because they could, they could clip right on. And people started running 15-inch uh, Mercury wheels that you could run, or 15-inch, I'm uh, sorry, Mercury or truck wheels. So um, on the truck wheels, you will see they have the 15-inch have the inside nub here. You can clip them right on, same hubcaps. Um, and this is the Mercury wheel here. You can see that has the clips on it. So you can clip them right on and you can interchange these different, these different wheels and, and you can also change the caps. So if you want to change the look of your car, totally you could put full wheel covers on or you can change these, you can change the tire size and they all interchange. Still five by five and a half pattern and um, they pretty much are the 15 inches. The nice thing our little secret is for whatever reason, they're like super cheap. Nobody really wants them still because everybody's hung up on the 16 inch wheel thing. And you can find these wheels, same hubcaps fit. 15 inch tires are actually kind of easier to find right now. Um, 16s are always out of stock. 15s it, you, know, you can find a lot of times. And really that's where you started seeing a lot more on cars into the 50s because again, people, uh, tires were easier to get. It was a more you know common size on factory cars. So people were running these 15 inch wheels more commonly. Now the uh, 15s a lot of times also will be a little bit wider, you will see. So. This, uh, this wheel is five inches here, versus like we were talking about, the standard is four, four and a half on the uh, 16 inch wheels, and you have to find a special kind of expensive truck, bigger truck wheel to run a five or five and a half inch wheel, where if you go to the 15 inch, you're already getting a wider wheel. But if you're looking for skinnies, it is pretty much impossible to find, because once they went to 15, everything got like five, five and a half, or even maybe six inch wheels. Um, now, these smoothie type wheels, there's also some variants. You can get into the Lincoln wheels as well, which are a little different. They have some little different clips on them. Um, those wheels, again, as long as they're five by five and a half uh, bolt pattern, they will fit on and it will bolt on no problem, but only if you're trying to do a specific type of look or achieving something kind of that's, that's very special, you probably don't have to worry about those wheels. They're pretty expensive. They're hard to find uh, those wheels and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, too much when you're hunting around. But the nice thing is that these like 15 inch wheels with the clips will fit this wheel right here. See, fits on, no problem with the clips. And also the inside nub wheel, it will fit on no problem as well. So you can clip them on all these different wheels. It doesn't really matter as long as you're matching your, your widths. Uh, you should be okay to swap some wheels around in the end. They pretty much look the same. Now, the only last thing I want to talk about is there are a lot of reproductions of these wheels, the smoothie wheels, as people uh, kind of hate to hear them called. The uh, aftermarket ones, obviously, there are multi-lug patterns that look a little bit different. And once you get into the aftermarket, you have to be very careful because the wheels will change the look. And some of the hubcaps may not fit. They may be set up for something different or an aftermarket deal. So you need to make sure that you're getting wheels that are remanufactured that have the inside nubs that match these hubcaps. So make sure when you're getting those, you're getting them from a, a reproduction source that actually fits these original hubcaps or you may have issues where the caps are flying off and they won't match. Now the other downside to a lot of the reproduction wheels are that they don't really offer narrow sizes. It's pretty much like five inches wide, I think is about as narrow as they go. And most of the time it's mainly 15 inch wheels. It's kind of getting harder to find 16 inch reproduction wheels. They are out there, but they're not as common. Um, but you can go and get a nice set of chrome, nostalgic style, 40 style wheels right from one of your 1-800 one, uh, parts sources and it will look pretty much just like this once you put the hubcaps and everything on. So that is a good cheap option if you want brand new wheels that you don't have to go through the time and uh, an effort to try and find original type wheels, but they are out there. The multi-lug wheels oftentimes get looked down on um, because of what they are. I think as long as if you're running some hubcaps over top of them, um, they can look the part on most any car. So if you're on a budget, it really doesn't matter, but if you're trying to dress it up with some hubcaps, sometimes you can get super cheap set of like $50 set of those wheels at a swap meet. As long as they have that, that about eight inch inside nub area, you can pop these original Ford caps on and you can run the car and probably 99% of the world will never notice and it will work out just fine. The goal is to get something that looks cool, save money and do it on a budget.
All right, the last thing to talk about on the smoothie style or 44 style wheels is if you're trying to put them onto your car, what do you need to do? So if you're using any type of drum that is from um, 44 to 48 Ford or even F1, early F1 style drums, brakes, um, even the Lincoln uh, drums, uh, if you're running that style setup, these wheels are pretty much bolt on, nothing you need to do between all of those years. So it's really nice you can just get the drums Whatever drums you can find that work, you can slide them right on your car. These will bolt on pretty much no problem at all. The problem a lot of times occurs when people try to put these wheels on earlier cars. So if you're trying to keep the original drums on, say, a 32 Ford or even a 35 Ford, and you want to convert from the wire wheel look to the steel wheel look, what you will find is they have these raised nubs that stick off of the center uh, of the wheel, or I'm sorry, of the drum. And that's for how the wire wheel actually um, is centered onto the drum that will actually hit on these wheels and your lugs will be too short and you won't be able to slide this wheel on and really get enough threads on there to start that so you do if you have an earlier car you will need to convert to the drums from a later car to safely put a set of these wheels on your car now most people are converting to hydraulic or juice brakes so it is a super common thing to just do that whole conversion in one shot. Then you can fit these wheels on. I think it is better if you're, if you're going through the hassle to get a set of later drums, put them on your car, regardless of the wheels you're running, so that you can then just swap wheels around with just putting one of those centering rings on like we talked about earlier. You can just slide a centering ring on if you want to run wire wheels for a car show or something like that. You just got to put that on instead of swapping the whole drums. So you can swap these over super easy. So once you're converted to those later drums, you could swap around to pretty much any of the wheels other than obviously the Y5 by just a matter of swapping the wheels out and maybe a centering ring and you're ready to go. So once you get your set of wheels that you like, pick your drums that will match or the most universal set of drums, fit them on your car and you are ready to go. Okay, so that was our Hot Rodding 101 wheel selection guide. So I hope that this quick crash course gave you guys exactly the information you need to make educated purchases or start getting in the right direction so you know what you want to put on your vehicle as you're gathering parts. Now this Hot Rodding 101 is not supposed to be showing every single fact about, for in this instance, every little difference of the wheels. We're trying to just give you the basics that you need to know, arm you with some knowledge so you're not buying incorrect parts, spending money on things that you do not need, and you can get your project and parts gathered and get it moving along much more quickly through the winter season or whenever you're building your car. Now, if you have an idea for another topic for the Hot Rodding 101, you can comment down below or you can send us an email at irontrapgarage at gmail.com. We're hoping to do more of these and we definitely want to do topics that will help you out if there's something you've been confused on or questions you have about some of this nerdy stuff in the, the nostalgic hot rodding custom world. We'd love to try and put together a video like this we will get you the information you need. The other thing is, comment down below. I want to hear some discussion and arguments. What is your favorite configuration on uh, wheels and hubcaps or trim rings for an early Ford or, uh, hot rod or custom or early hot rod and custom in general? I want to hear down below what is your favorite, what is the best one to have, and you guys can duke it out in the comments. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.